I'm actually excited about uh, the presence of uh, a number of delegates drawn from a number of countries on our continent. I mean, the presentation, you know, covers Ghana, Nigeria, Tanzania, Uganda, uh, South Africa, of course, and, and the USA. I think it's important to, uh, to mention that. And I also want to, at this point, uh, on the question of protocol, to greet all the colleagues who are going to be participating in officiating at this event. Mrs. Sisulu, who is the chairperson of the Pugu Children's Literature Foundation, Professor A. Timowski, the Director of International Programs of American Council on Learned Societies, Professor D. Tipio, Associate Professor of Literature and Film of Makerere University in Uganda, Dr. S. E. Egia, Associate Professor of the Department of English, Ibrahim Badamasi Babangida University in Nigeria, and then, of course, from our side, colleagues from our own executive and extended management who are represented here this afternoon by Professor Mamukheti Paking, the Vice Principal of Research and Innovation. Let me also greet all the representatives from all the higher education institutions in South Africa, as well as on the continent representatives from other research institutes who are also present with us this afternoon. And as I mentioned, all our delegates from the countries that I mentioned earlier, delegation of emeritus professors who are present with us as well this afternoon. Mr. M.K. Mabuza, the president of the UNISA National Student Representative Council and members of his executive, our students, members of the UNISA community, other invited dignitaries, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Good afternoon. I know it's a cold day, but uh, it is always good, you know, to have a conversation of this nature. So having said good afternoon, it is important in this country to also say Sanibonan. Dumelan. Huyameda. Inda. Abshe. No, I know that I'm putting you in serious trouble. <laughs> so I need to stop at that point and also greet uh, you, Professor Vusim Nube who is the acting director of UNISA Press and all the members of staff of the UNISA Press. A very warm welcome to all of you uh, colleagues. Karibu. The African Humanities Series is a partnership between UNISA Press and the African Humanities Program on the American Council of Learned Societies. The series covers topics in African histories, languages, literatures, and cultures. So submissions have been solicited from fellows of the African Humanities Program, which is administered by the American Council of Learned Societies and financially supported by the Carnegie Corporation of New York. I believe that it will be true to say, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, that with UNISA's vision, that is towards becoming the African University in the service of humanity, the partnership between UNISA and the African Humanities Program was inevitable. Asserting as it does, our wish to serve every country on the African continent while transcending language and cultural barriers. UNISA places great importance on the celebration and promotion of our African arts and culture through various endeavors, including the Archaeology and Anthropology Museum, the Art Gallery, the music directorates, and little theater, to name but a few. 
We aim to achieve our vision through our dynamic research and innovation portfolio, whose research initiatives are focused on finding answers to Africa's educational and developmental problems and aspirations. Our partnership with African Humanities Programme on this serves to further that agenda in that the African Humanities Programme's purpose, which is to encourage and enable the production of new knowledge in Africa by Africans, indeed finds strong resonance with our own aims. What many may perceive as new knowledge on our continent is in most instances indigenous knowledge unique only to a select few of a given culture or society. African countries, in fact, have a rich knowledge system that encompasses the skills, experiences, and insights of its people, which have been applied over the ages in maintaining or improving our livelihoods. And to suggest that Africa is not in a position to tap into those resources in charting its own destiny is fallacious a fact which is increasingly asserted and acknowledged in the statement, African solutions for African problems, for democracy and development. We are called upon as Africans to take charge of our own futures. And this book launch is but one concrete manifestation of our commitment to doing so. The African Humanities Series publishes works of highest quality that will foreground the best research being done by emerging scholars within five years of receiving their PhD degrees, which is the program's eligibility requirement. More than 100 African scholars participate as fellows in this program, whose purpose is to encourage and enable the production of new knowledge by Africans in the five countries designated by Carnegie Corporation, Ghana, Nigeria, South Africa, Tanzania, and Uganda. By forming partnerships in Africa and throughout the world, we are able to help the people of our continent to reach their dreams. The program further supports the development of a continent-wide community of humanities scholars and fosters ties between African scholars and the international community in which ACLS is an established and respected voice. Of course, as UNISA, that has its tentacles across the continent, we press within the continent of our own uh, Africa, the partnership with UNISA Press plays an important role in effectively promoting accessibility to and the dissemination and development of knowledge and research outputs, as well as supporting the lifelong learning that this program, the Nobel program, embodies. South Africa's recent elections that mark the 20 years of our democracy, democracy which not have been achieved, ladies and gentlemen, without the generous aid and solidarity from fellow African countries and international organizations. Excuse me. The realization of our democratic dream was in fact supported by the likes of David Hood of Carnegie Corporation, Felicia Kentridge and Jeff Badender, who in 1978 set up the Legal Resources Center, which presented crucial legal challenges to apartheid legislation. Among other African leaders, we relied on the support of leaders such as Kwame Nkrumah, who on the occasion of Ghana's independence in 1957, declared that Ghana's freedom was indivisible from the total liberation of the African continent. On Julius Nyerere of Tanzania, whose country became a home, away from home, to freedom fighters, after, to, to our freedom fighters. So after the banning of the ANC and the African National Congress, early in the 1990s, we stood to understand clearly that it was indeed at the point where these organizations were banned in 1960 that these links and the support became so visible that everyone else began to understand the relationship that we have across the continent. 
and also the Algeria's post-1975 allegiance, starting with the Mutala Obasanjo military administration's foreign policy that has been described as activist and militant, but which was so supportive to our struggle for freedom. We celebrate and live our freedom today because the actions of those before us, and you will perhaps understand then why UNISA is so committed to and supportive of initiatives such as this one. Having benefited from the support of our brothers and sisters, we are committed to reciprocating in kind towards the growth and development of this country and the continent. So distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, as a university, we are honored to launch this program and to be making a seminal contribution to the growth and development of authentically African scholarship and knowledge production. So thank you very much.